Most of the time it's you, the user of the data, who knows the best what kind of location prisms are needed to automatically organize the data to fit for your purpose. Where exactly the prism borders are and how this might change over time. You could model the prisms outside SimpleBeam in some model auto tool or even SketchUp and then use the import functions. However, starting from SimpleBeam 9, it's also possible to model the location prisms inside SimpleBeam. My name is Sakari Lehtinen. Welcome. In this tutorial, you will learn how to model location prisms inside SimpleBeam. It's actually quite fun. By the end of the tutorial, you will have prisms ready to assign locations to your model. Open SimpleBeam and a model. Go to the Location Editor workspace here. Enable Location Tools. There are several ways to model the prisms. Let's start with the most simple one. We will go through the special workflows in other tutorials. Click the Model Horizontal Location Prism function from the ribbon menu. A dialog opens. You model location prisms so that you can automatically assign location identifiers to the building elements. So you should give your location a name or names. Let's say this prism represents the section A and the first floor in the section A. Location 0 to 9 are ready-made properties you can use. You can select different property for each semantically different identifier. How many you want to use depends on your use case. This will all make sense once we get the first prism ready. Not that you can always change and assign the identifiers later. Ok, if you have multiple buildings in your containment or model tree, then you should choose one here. You don't have to worry about this if you only have one building, like in this model. You can see it here in the containment palette. But there could be multiple ones. Selecting the building makes sure that all the options below make sense and that the prism will be assigned to the right building and building story. Next, select the way you want to define the bottom elevation of the prism. Note that this also defines the modeling plane. Let's try the easiest one first. Select elevation of the first floor. The items in the drop-down are indeed building stories from the building we selected above. Next, select the top elevation. This is the elevation where the prism is extruded. Again, select probably the easiest one, the elevation of the second floor. This way, we will create a prism between the elevations of these two building stories. Click OK and the modeling of the footprint starts. Follow the instructions in the status bar. Pick the first point. It can be a random point outside the model or a point from the geometry. Pick another point, note that you can pick the points from any level. This is actually very convenient, so that you can make sure that the prism covers everything you need. Still as you can see, the footprint is projected to the modeling plane. If you make a mistake, press backspace to erase the previous point, like this, and then try again. If you want to exit the modeling completely, press escape key. Continue selecting the points. The footprint cannot cross itself, obviously. You can only model straight segments, but other than that, the footprint can be as complex as needed. SimpleBeam is not a model order tool. It doesn't have all the fancy modeling help like you have in the design softwares. Then again, modeling is really easy and quick to learn. In this example, we kept all the objects visible. Sometimes it's easier to find the right points if you isolate only the relevant objects or use clipping planes. We'll come back to these tricks later. For now, finish the footprint by clicking the starting point or pressing enter. The latter is usually the best way. Now the prism is created and all the previous steps should start making sense. Click on the prism. Let's see its properties. Here are the location 0 and 1 properties as defined. Click on the first floor from the containment palette. Isolate the objects. The bottom of the prism is at the elevation of the first floor as defined. The prism is extruded to the elevation of the second floor. The top and the bottom surfaces are indeed horizontal. By the way, note that you can see the elevation of the building stories here in the properties palette. Note also that the building stories can have objects which are outside its elevation, like this slab here. It's very common practice to model slabs below building story elevation. Or the curtain wall here. It is assigned to the first floor, but it goes beyond the second floor's elevation. Many times there are multi-story high objects in the models. Ok, this prism might be exactly what you are looking for already. Or not, it depends on your use case. This is also the reason why we have the other options in the modeling dialog. 
You cannot delete or edit prisms in the current version of SimpleBIM, but you can always drag and drop them to the excluded bucket like this. Let's try another configuration to better understand how the options work. Click the model horizontal location prism from the menu. The dialog opens again. It remembers the previous settings for convenience. Let's keep the section name, but change the building story. This will be the first floor plus. Select bottom extent of the model so that we can get the slab included. Choose big point for the top elevation so that we are able to include the curtain wall. Note that you can freely mix and match these options. You will see. Click OK. Follow the instructions again in the status bar and model the footprint as before. Finish the footprint by pressing Enter. Next, you need to define the level of the top surface because we chose the big option. Again, as instructed, pick a point from the top of the curtain wall. Note that it can be any point. Just make sure that it's from the right height. The prism is created and indeed it now covers the slab and the curtain wall. But it also covers all the other building elements from the second floor. Let's do another quick one. Model horizontal location prism. Change the building story to roof. Select pick point for the base elevation and top extent of the model for the top elevation. Click OK. First, select the base elevation as instructed. It can be a point or surface. Click on the top of the previous prism so this new one begins where the previous one ended. Model the footprint. Note that you can also pick points from the previous prism. You could isolate the prisms from here. Hit enter. The prism is created. Now it goes from the previous prism to the top of the model. Nice. Let's look at the dialog one more time. As I said, you can mix and match the bottom and top elevation options as you like. Model means the lowest and the highest points from all of the geometry in the model. The top at the bottom of the building is defined by all the geometry of the building elements assigned to it. This is a relevant option if there are multiple buildings in the model. Elevation is the elevation in the model coordinate system. So if you happen to know the exact number, then this is the most accurate way. So let's say you want to model a section which goes all the way from the bottom to the top of the model, like this. I change the identifiers. This time it's all the building stories. Now, as a final touch, let's add some room to the top of the model. Maybe there are objects in a higher elevation in the other disciplines models or even in the future updates of this model. Set for example a 1 meter offset. You can give the offset in any units you like. Click OK and model the footprint. You want the prism to be connected to the other ones, but otherwise you don't always have to be exact. Remember that you can also pick points outside the building. Hit enter, the prism is created. Nice. Can you start to see how the options work? If you measure it, indeed the top is offset 1 meter from the top of the model as defined. Ok, you are ready to resolve the locations. There are other detailed tutorials about resolving, but for now let's just do it for fun. And to see that as soon as you have the prisms ready, you can use them. Resolve and split. Ok. It's ready. Select all the objects. Click a location value from the properties palette to highlight the objects from that location. Nice. It's a really powerful way of organizing data. Finally, you can export the model prisms to IFC. There's a special option for exporting all the prisms at once here in the dropdown, but you can also use the basic export if you need more control which prisms should be exported and which not. Having the prisms in a separate model enables you to reuse them later with a model update or with another discipline's models. There are other tutorials about this also. Pretty sweet stuff. That's the basic of location prism modeling. See the other tutorials to learn more. For now, thank you for watching. See you next time.